Why does observability matter for testers? How can TDD with Cypress component testing take your front-end engineering to the next level? And do you have a GitHub account? If so, you might have been hacked. Find out the answers to these and all other full pipeline DevOps, software testing, automation testing, performance testing, security testing in 10 minutes or less in this episode of the Test Skill News Show for the week of September 25th. So grab your favorite cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. This episode of the Test Skill News Show is sponsored by the awesome folks at Apple Tools that has a visual AI validation testing platform that's a must have for any automation project. But don't miss it. Check it out yourself with a free account offer by clicking on the very first link in the very first comment down below. And while you're there, why not like, leave a comment, and subscribe to get alerted every time I release a new episode. First up, automation news. Catalan just launched an AI augmented software quality management platform. Here's a trend I've been seeing over the past few months is uh, quality platforms coming out that are AI driven to help you with test management. So let's see what this means with the Catalan new platform. Check it out. So I found this on LinkedIn, and it's just a quick announcement on the Catalan platform was just announced or just released. So this was built to help you get visibility throughout the entire quality lifecycle. And so Catalan platform handles things like testing new builds, authoring tests, helps you provide execution environments, helps you execute test suites, provides release readiness insights for production, and also offers a feedback loop into your agile software teams and business owners. And the article goes on to talk about why they developed this platform. Obviously, building software is a complex and challenging task, but creating software that people love is even harder. And so they created a platform to help you understand challenges faced by teams of all sizes, creating high quality software in compressed periods of time. And the Catalan platform provides a holistic approach that leverages the strength of the entire team to quickly and easily deliver quality products. It also includes things like AI powered visual testing, flexible development environments with no code uh, features for users, and also it has a free version as well. So another trend, so if you're struggling with your actual test management of your automation, here's one of the type of tools you should definitely check out and you can see it in the first comment down below. If you use Cypress and you're into component testing, I have a great resource for you on how TDD with Cypress components testing can help you and your teams really accelerate your front-end engineering and take it to the next level. And the resource Marat post is a Git book. So it has a bunch of different chapters on all types of things that are going to help you with component testing, specifically for Cypress with code examples. It's definitely a cool resource. You definitely should give a read if you're doing anything with Cypress and component testing. So are you a tester? If so, do you do live monitoring of your software in production? If not, you definitely should. And here's some reasons why. And this article is by George and it talks all about why live monitoring by software testing engineers should be your best friend. And Judge points out some of the reasons why, like why monitoring post-production is important, what kinds of data can be collected, how often should data be collected, and some other reasons why he feels this is an important must-have skill. So if you're not doing live monitoring, if you want to learn more about live monitoring, here's a quick resource and quick read to tell you some reasons why you may want to explore this a little further on your own as well. Thank you, Judge, for this resource. And definitely give him a follow because he's an awesome resource as well. Just curious to know, let me know in the comments, how many of you all still use Microfocus UFT? I know the company I worked with went through a transition. They used all Mercury or HP products until maybe 2015. And then they went and switched all over to open source. Uh, good and bad of uh, that approach. But either way, just curious to know what your thoughts are. If you're still using UFT, let me know in the comments below. But this next article is about a new release of UFT that if you are using UFT, you definitely should check out. Or if you haven't used FT, or if you haven't used UFT in a while, they have some cool new features that maybe you should revisit and see if it's now something that you should definitely check out for your team. All right, so UFT1 is finally released and some of the new features and includes like new capabilities for SAP testing, which I know a lot of people have been asking me about. This release also includes a feature that helps you to create more complex object descriptions using AI inspection or AI recording. That's gonna help you as well. And there's a link to a resource to a video that goes over all the features in more detail. 
So it seems like they're adding a lot, a lot more of AI into the UFT. And if you haven't seen it in a while, I hear from people that have used it that they're pretty impressed by it. So definitely check it out. And you can check it out once again by checking out the first comment down below. So we talked about why live monitoring really matters for testers, but how about observability? So this next article is all about why observability also should matter for testers. So let's see what this is all about. This is also by Praveen Khan, who's been on the Test Guild Automation podcast a few times and also was one of our presenters at our online events. So I was really excited to see this article. And she goes over some things like symptoms of lack of observability, how observability is multidimensional, how testing and observability meet or how they relate to one another, how to get started with observability, and how to make your software and your work better by using observability and a lot more. So thank you, Praveen, for this. Good to see you. And definitely give her a follow as well because she's also another must-follow resource that always posts a lot of interesting content like this as well. You know, I'll be honest, I don't like uh, talking at events and um, like live events. I love online events. Online events are my jam, but I said events, yeah. But, you know, the folks at Karate have convinced me to go out to Star West. So I'm not speaking per se. I'm hosting a roundtable. And so I get to speak to some awesome experts. So it's going to be a, a tool agnostic, actually, session, even though it's it's obviously sponsored by Karate Labs. But we're just going to dive into some key hot button items that's going on in the industry now with some awesome experts. So you can check out this panel that we have. It's going to be a great session. And I think you're going to learn a lot. So if you're going to be at Star West, definitely check it out. I'll be around also. So if you have anything to do with automation or performance testing and you want to be on the podcast, I'm going to have all my gear with me so I can record it on site with you also. So if you if that's you, let me know. Or if you see me at Star West, just stop me and say hi. And so Star West is next week, but this week I'm also going to be speaking on an online event on low code versus no code. And I'll be joined by the awesome Larry, who's an awesome test automation expert. And we're just going to be talking about low code versus no code. Check it out and register it down below and hope to see you there. Next up, performance and site reliability news. So this is a money segment and it's how Chaos Engineering Startup SteadyBit raises $7.8 million. So let's see what this is all about. If you don't know, SteadyBit is a chaos engineering platform designed to proactively reduce downtime and also provide visibility into systems to detect issues early. And more than chaos, I think it's not a good name for this. It should be more resilience testing. I think a lot of people can understand that more, especially from a tester's perspective. And also in the statement from the co-founder of SteadyBit actually mentions resilience as a team sport. And because resilience is a shared responsibility, they develop SteadyBit as the chaos engineering platform that is equally beneficial to site reliability engineers, DevOps, developers, and I'm going to throw in testers. Because so I think if you're not doing chaos engineering and you're a tester, you should definitely be involved because you have a lot of knowledge in this area that could probably help people do this even better. So definitely check that out in the first comment down below. Next up, security testing. Do you use GitHub? How about Circle CI? If so, you're going to want to pay attention to this next news article. And this goes over a new phishing campaign targeting GitHub accounts that's making its rounds on how accounts are being stolen by fake Circle CI accounts. Criminals are currently distributing a phishing email in which they impersonate a continuous integration and delivery platform, Circle CI, and the email is being sent to GitHub users and warns them that their Circle CI user terms and privacy policy has changed, and they need to sign into their GitHub accounts to accept new terms. And the article goes to explain the attack in a little more detail and what domains are being used for those phishing emails. And speaking of security, I also found out about a new tool called Stackhawk, which recently expanded its API security testing suite. And so the deeper API security coverage suite that they just expanded is based on dynamic application security testing, or DAS. And the latest release also adds the ability to add test scripts and data collected by tools such as Postman or Cypress to guide scanners by requiring access to API documentation. So it seems like a really cool development. I like how it integrates with some of these functional tools so you get multiple use out of your scripts. So definitely check this out as well and let me know what you think. And for links of everything of value we covered in this news episode, head over to the, all the links in the first comment down below. And while you're there, make sure to check out our awesome sponsor, Apply Tools, free account offer and discover how to take your animation testing to the next level, leveraging visual AI. So that's it for this episode of the Test Guild News Show. I'm Joe. My mission is to help you succeed in creating end-to-end full-stack pipeline automation awesomeness.
As always, test everything and keep the good. Cheers.